to his own from today's teaching. Today we are looking at the power of his presence. The power of God presence. The East here is God. The power of God presence. Or I call it divine presence. Divine presence. Or I call it the presence of God. So it can be the power of his presence, it can be the power of God presence. Can, we can call it divine presence, we can call it the presence of God. Whatever it may be, we are just talking about the presence of God. Because in life, what I've discovered in life in my little time as a, as a, as a pastor, as a shepherd, is that I discovered that the secret of success, the secret of victory, the secret of unusual exploit that people achieve in life, neither in the Bible, neither in the Bible time, or in this time, in this war time, the physical time, not the Bible time, or the achievement, talking about people like Moses, people like David, people like Elijah, people like Elisha, people like all oh, this, all oh, the even Jesus Christ, even the apostle. What I have discovered, I mean, people like Dadadibo, you know, you know, you know uh, all this powerful men of God all over the world, wanting to have discovered the secret of their sources of victory and uncommon, unusual exploit. Even those who are not in ministry, those who are doing business, those who are running private business, those who are in public places, or those who are working anywhere, you know, the secret is this, is that, is that of God's presence is always with them. When you see a man that is, is successful, is, is, is succeeding in life, or is making, is climbing the ladder of life. And that is why if you look at Psalm 18, that is one Psalm that I look at, that I love very well, Psalm 18. David was saying something, he was saying something. He said, he said by him, say by who? By God, I can walk through a truth. I can climb through a, I can jump through a wall. By God, by God, Moses was, uh, I say Moses, David, uh, David was saying, because David knew one thing that many of us does not know. He was saying that by God, he can live through a truth, you know, and said he can, he can, he can walk, he can walk, you know, pass through a truth, you know, <laughs> okay. And he, he said, he, can, he will walk through a truth and he live through a war. Why? Because of the presence of God. And what is he saying? That when the presence of God is with you, there is no barrier, there is no obstacle, there is no hindrance. That, no, that means absolutely nothing can stop you from achieving your goal, from reaching your promised land, from reaching, from fulfilling what God has ordained you or has called you to fulfill in life. So, today we are going to look at how we can have God abiding presence and the benefit in having God present. In the book of Exodus chapter 33, which is a very common Bible passage that we know, Exodus 33 from verse 13 to 14, Exodus uh, 14, uh, 13 to 15, he said, now therefore, that is Moses, now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Nations should be yeah, your people. Thank God for Bible. And he said, my presence will go with you and I give you rest. Leave it there. Don't, don't take it away. Actually, leave it there. I said, leave it there. And he said, my presence will go with you and give you rest. What is the one telling us? Telling us that in the presence of God, you find rest. When you are in the presence of God, the Bible says, you know, the Bible says, it's in your presence, there's a fullness of joy. And to your right hand are pleasure forevermore. And God is saying to his servant, he said, 
because of my presence, I will give rest. That means the presence of God guarantees rest. And that means outside the presence of God, there is chaos, there is trouble, there is calamity. But in the presence of God, you find rest. Verse 15, yes? Verse 15 now. Thank you, IT. Verse 15, he said in verse, he said, then he said to him, that is Moses now, saying to God, that Lord, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us from here. He's telling God that God, if your presence will not go with us, sir, let us remain where we are. Because without the presence of God, failure is, 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 you know, is imminent, it's possible. Failure is there. Without the presence of God, there is disappointment. In fact, without the presence of God, they see there are a lot of things, that's a lot of people will get swallowed in the wilderness of life. Without the presence of God, that's why the Bible says, said, 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 that's why the Bible says that, you see, when, you, when the presence of God is with you, it renew your strength. You mount up with wings like eagles. And that is when you have the presence of God. And when you don't have the presence of God in your life, you struggle, you crawl. They will not crawl in that mighty name of Jesus. So, this was Moses asking God to go in the journey with him. See, he said, that is why that's one prayer point we will pray. By the grace of God, we will do it when we begin to do this, our, our, this 21 day fasting prayer. See, there are a lot of prayer points I have injected today that we know. That one, one of this is the presence of God. As we journey from this year to another year, we need this presence to go with us. Who ever thought that as we're finishing 2019, that's going to be this, this challenging year in front of us. Moses did not ask for signs and wonders. Moses did not ask for miracles. He asked God to show him his way. And God answered by saying that his presence will go with him because when the presence of God go with you, there will be ways. Because he himself is the way. So when the presence of God go with you, that means the way is going with you. And what he asked, he said, Moses said, show me your way. But God responded. He said, he, said, he said to him, if your presence don't go with us, he said, show, he said, show me the way. But God said, I will, okay. My way is the, my presence that will go with you. Brethren, whatever you want to do, any journey you want to embark in life, before you leave your house every morning, before, don't be hurry. Ask for the presence of God. The presence of God in the journey of life make a lot of difference make a lot of this way. Because many children of God, they are completely ignorant of the presence of God. Many people know nothing about the power of the presence of God. Many people don't understand. We just, we just, we are in hurry. We just shower. We just shout in the morning without asking for his abiding presence to go with us. In fact, before you go to bed at night, ask for his prayer because when the presence of God is with you, there is no demon that can begin to jump, long jump, and high jump on you. When the, when, when the, when the presence of God is with you, even in your sleep, there is no way you can have a nightmare. That's why the, the psalmist says, I lie down and sleep because you make me to dwell in safety. When the presence of God is with you, you will lie down, you will sleep, and you will sleep like a baby. Nothing will disturb you. But when the presence of God is absent, there is fear, there is panicking, there is nightmare. And that is why, that's one of the things I put in this 21 first prayer that I want you and I beg you to take part is one of the topics we pray about seriously is the presence of God, divine presence. Anyone who has not experienced the power of God's presence cannot talk, of it, cannot talk about it because if you, if you have not experienced the power of presence, that means you don't know God. The difference between success and failure in life is the presence of God that you carry. Because the presence of God gives you favor. The presence of God opens doors. The presence of God 
is not open, in fact, in fact, open gates. The presence of God makes things to happen. The presence of God brings favor, bring grace. The favor of God brings mercy. The favor of God makes you to be first among God, second to none. The presence of God in your life set you apart from others. The presence of God in your life make you to run out without tired, make you to walk without winning. What that means when you have the presence of God and everything I've stated, it is opposite of it when you don't carry his presence. When you don't carry the presence of God, you when you walk on your own energy, that's why the Bible says, for those who know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Those who carry the presence of God, they are always strong, they are do exploit. It's, when I say you are strong, it's not your size. It's not because you go to gym. It's not because you carry weight. You have the presence of God in you. You fact, when you when you carry the presence of God because you, you become a terror to principality and power. That's why the book of Luke says, oh my God, thank you. He said, when God said, I will give you power to train upon serpent and scorpion and all power of the enemy, nothing shall by enemies or to that means you are a man or woman that carries presence. Hey, Kabaya. When you carry the presence of God, you trend upon serpent and scorpion. You trend upon the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Why? Because you carry his presence. Oh my God. Having the presence of God with you is what more than riches of fame or power. We can go anywhere when the presence of God is with us. You can go anywhere. When you carry the presence of God with you, where is that? Where is the virus coming from? If the virus attack you with that, why? Because the presence of God in you make a lot. In fact, when the presence of God lives, that means you carry God in you. And that is why Apostle Paul said, because I bear upon my body the mark of so therefore no man should trouble. What is he saying? I carry the presence of God with me so you cannot trouble me. Which is with the familiar spirit. Baba Lawo, Yalawo, any one of you, I am untouchable to you because why I carry it. The awesome presence of God. Praise the Lord. I can go to many days because his presence with me. I can care, I don't care what direction it is. If the presence of God is there, I can go anywhere. A sleep is dangerous when the presence of God is absent in the uh, when the, uh, a sleep is dangerous when the presence of God is absent. In the presence of God, as fullness of you have said that, but out of his presence, there is frustration. Out of his presence, there is multiple demons. Out of his out of his presence, there is discouragement. Out of his presence, that is so, that is sorrow. Out of his presence, that is fear. Out of his presence, that is sickness. Sorry, let me put this on something. Out of his presence, there is sickness. Out of his presence, that is sin, that is suicide. Out of his presence, that distress. So when the presence of God is absent, that means joy will not be there because in the presence of God, that's fullness of joy. So in the absence of his presence, that's fullness of sorrow, that's fullness of sadness, that's fullness of trouble. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Ah, do you have the presence? Of, do you have the presence of God with you? Or have you, have you lost his presence? More than anyone else, after this teaching, make sure, make sure that his presence with you. See, if it is sin that is driving his presence away, repent of those sins. If it's any other thing, if it's laziness based on prayer, if it's laziness based on fasting, fasting is coming on Monday. And then we are to fast. You may not be able to fast to six, but fast. Fasting draws us closer to his presence. Hmm. In Psalm 51, verse 11, which is, which is, which is, in Psalm 51, verse 11, Psalm 51, verse 11, David says something. He said, do not cast me away from your presence. That is David speaking there. Do not cast me away from your presence. 
and take not the Holy Spirit from me. This is a very powerful prayer. The presence of God break barrier. The Bible says God touch mountain, he make like a was. The presence of God met every mountain. The presence of God will part your recipe. The presence of God will be down every month, month uh, uh, the wall of Jebrat is confronting you. The presence of God will destroy every enemy that is standing between you and your inheritance and your promised land. And that is why you must not joke with his presence. The psalmist is trying to say that if God wants to take every other thing from him, he can. That's what he's saying. God, because if God takes money, if, the, if money goes away, when you are in the presence of God, you will make more money. So he's saying now, you, you, you know the life of Job. Job lost everything. But that's one thing Job did not lose. Job did not lose the, 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 the wonderful and the ultimate and the divine core presence of God. Despite losing everything, even, even despite losing his head. And because he did not lose the presence of God, every other thing that he lost was restored back to him. And that is why David is telling to God, say, God, you can take everything. But that's one thing. I don't want to joke with. Don't take your presence away from me, Lord. It's a good prayer point. It's a good prayer point. Oh my God. He says, God should not be silent about his matter. Even if you want to discipline him, he can. But he should please not remove his presence for him. Say, God, you can discipline me. And God did discipline him. The child of product of that adultery, he lost the child. God disciplined, but that's one thing. He retained. I say it again. He retained the presence of God. Why it is being written in the Bible that David fight this one? He destroyed his people. If you read the book of Judges, the Bible says God make no. Oh my God, God was speaking. In the book of Isaiah, is it 36 now? When that king, what is the name now? That was boasting. Is it, is it, what is the name? That was boasting against the Israelites. That was boasting against Ezekiah. And God told him, it is me that make all those nations to become weak in your presence. Even God took Nebuchadnezzar. It is me that make other people to look weak. I made them to look like a woman in your presence. So when God is with you, when you are kind of person of God, God, he, he makes your enemy to be weak. He made the weapon. That's why the Bible says, no weapon fight against them shall prosper. That Bible verse is only applicable to those who carry his presence. The psalm says, God can discipline him, but it should please not even turn from him. We need to have the presence of the Lord in our lives. It is a wonderful experience. It is essential in our everyday life. You cannot have the presence of God in your life and fail. You cannot carry the presence of God in your life and, and people will reject you. You cannot carry the presence of God between and people tell you there's no way. You cannot carry the presence of God with you and somebody else barrier is stopping you. Listen to me, brethren. Oh my God. The Bible was talking about Peter. The Bible says, Herod, Pig James, he killed James, and the people were happy. Oh my God, this is a wonderful thing. Let me, I will do. He stretched for the hand, he hold on to Peter, put Peter in the prison. The church raised prayer point for Peter. And God sent his angel to take Peter to that prison. Listen to this. Angel represent the presence of God. And the Bible says, Oh my Kanda Yalaba. As they were going, all those doors begin to open. 
And the Bible says, say, when they get to the gate that lead to the city, he open. No gate can tell God where you go to pass. Is the gate? Is the way? Is the truth? Is the life? So when you carry present with you, no door can be. No God can shut. All God door become automatic door like the bank door. They open on their own accord because now, oh my God, do you see that psalm that David says? He says David was saying that. <laughs> he said, "You mountain, why did you skip like a ram?" He said, "Ah, ah, you know they see." In the presence of the King of Glory, I must leave the way. When, when you can't bring up God, when mountains see you, they will skip, they will run. Why? Because you are carrying the awesome presence of God. Moses has several problems with the children of Israel. Sometimes they want to, they will have stolen to dead. He will remember God's promises. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give you rest. If the presence of God will not go with them, the presence of God symbolizes stand in the camp of Israel by the, the, the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And listen to this. Go and read the Bible very well. I can't give you everything. The Bible says, they dare not move. When, the, when that cloud stay, they will not move until, the, until he asks them to move. They dare not, neither day or night. Immediately as the, the cloud, uh, the presence of God is moving, that is time for them to move. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't dare to move without God, without the presence of God. How would they comfort the Amalekah? How would they comfort the, uh, the king of uh, the king of Og? How would, they, how would they comfort all these ones? If the temple of God with them. Remember, when the spies get the, the, the two spies that Joshua sent, when they get to, 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 uh, uh, to Jericho, that woman, Ahab, that that uh, that that the prostitute. What's now? He said, Ahab, Ahab. When he said something, he said, We have heard what God has done. I dry see. He said, every one of us, all the men here, we are weak already. Their strength have left them. Why? Because somebody, people are coming that are carrying the presence of God. It is the presence of God that will not allow the causes of, my, uh, what do you call it now, uh, Balaam, to affect them. Because when you carry the presence of God, no cause. That's what the Bible says. There is no enchantment. There is no divination. Why? Because the presence of God with you, it makes the difference. It makes the difference. That is, you can have trouble everywhere, everywhere, fear and threatening outside. But since you are prayed, and you know that the secret of knowing the Lord is being in his presence, nothing will make you afraid. Many of us today, we are afraid. These many people are not coming to church now, people are afraid of Corona. The kind of person of God with you, when Corona sees you, he will jump to that side. Say this one is dangerous. When demon sees a man that carries the presence of God, demon will let the demon want to die. Listen to this. I was so close. The closer you are to fire, the hotter you are. The farther you are moving from the fire, the cooler you become. That means the closer you move to the Lord, the more of his presence you are. And I've said this over, over, over again. God, you don't, God does not change. God doesn't change. God is not changing. God cannot be changed. You can't change God. God is not changing. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen to me. The more of God you want, the more of God you, you want depends on you. I've said it over, over again. It is not determined by God. It's determined by you. So, the further you move away from him, the, cl the closer you are to the devil. But then, it is a wonderful thing to, to, uh, to be in the presence of the Lord. 
and it is dangerous things to be far away from him. It is calamitous, it is, that's calamity, don't mind my English, for a person that moves from the presence of the Almighty God. When God vomit a person, the enemy will deal with that person ruthlessly. That's why Psalm 91, yes, from verse 1. That's why, that's why the Psalm 91 say this. Psalm 91 from verse 1, yes. Psalm 91 from verse 1, who is, yes, I tell me, God bless you. Said, he who dwells <laughs> in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the presence under the shadow of Almighty. Yes, verse 2. Oh my God. Oh my God, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my foster, my God in him I will trust. It's he that do I continue. If you read all those things, that's why when the place that continue, just yes, continue, so when I say continue, I just want to continue that verse. Surely he shall deliver from the snare of the father and from the peril of pestilence. Verse four, he shall cover you with his father because you are all, because he, he, oh my God, the presence of God cover like a feather, and others when you shall take refuge. It true shall be your shield and your buckler, verse 5, yes? You shall not be afraid of the terror by the night or the arrow that fly by day, whatever it is. Why? You are under the presence of God. It told you, say, how I carry you on my ego, like, on my own, like ego. God, the presence of God. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 16, I was, I'm running up half minute, two minutes more. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible says something there. And then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nob on the east of Eden. See Genesis chapter 4, verse 13. And Cain said, Genesis 4, and Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can be. What is the punishment? God banished him for his presence. It is a great punishment to be out of God's presence. It is good to pray that you not undergo this kind of punishment. Being struck there by lightning is better than, to, than for you Falling on a person, a mountain falling on a person is better. Oh my God. I pray to thee that the presence of God will not depart from us. And as many of us that have lost it, God will have mercy upon us. Whatever we have done, God will draw us back to his presence. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, what happened? Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says, and they hear the sound of the Lord God walking the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife eat themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the tree of the garden. The Lord God used to go to the garden in the evening to have fellowship with Adam and Eve. But when they sinned against him, they could no longer behold his face. They had to hide from his person. They used to live well, but sin broke their relationship with God. They were pushed out of the garden from the presence of the Lord because they disobeyed God and refused to put blame where he belongs. They refused to acknowledge their mistake. And it is common these days for we Christians to blame others when things go wrong. Don't blame anybody. Go back to God. I need to tell people, when you mess up, don't run away from God, run to him. See what David says, say, it is better to fall to the hand of God because he's merciful. Beloved, if you go wrong, it is you that should be blamed, not the church or your wife or your husband or your parent, not even the devil. That should be blamed for your mistake, but you. Don't blame the devil. That time that you say devil, devil say I am in Canada. Last time you say I'm in Afghanistan. 
See, I'm supervising so what is happening in America and California. And because it cannot be in every place at the same time, it is our mistake. Let's correct it. And let's ask God for, for mercy. So that his present, remember David, even though he sinned against God, he repented and the present God continued. I come to make success and I mean to make progress. Praise the Lord. This is where I will stop tonight, by grace of God. And then next time we meet again after this fasting and prayer. Over to you. Over to you, Brendan. Any contribution, any question before we call it a day? Yes. I'm here. Any question, any question, any question. The line is open now. I've, I've concurred where I am now, so I think I've said enough. Mr. Chief, I cannot hear you at all. I, you, are, you are so far away. So who's going to work for us? Mr. Chief, it's not available today. Who's going to take this position for him today? Mr. Mika, are you available? Who's available? Mr. Samson, Mr. Evans, who's available? Mr. Samson, who's available? Please. Mr. Samson, are you available? Who's available? Mr. Samson, who's available? Please. 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 Mr. Samson, who's available? Uh, it's far away, but we can at least uh, better. The floor is open. If you have a question, please wave your hand. Or oh, let's see what you what you have for us. Okay. Um someone asked a, a question. Um okay. Gabriel, he said at the time Moses lost the promise of lost the promise of entering the promised land, was the presence of God with him. That's number one. Two, can a genuine Christian die of COVID-19? Who can answer that question? I like that. I like that. Yes, there are a lot of prophets here now. Yeah, answer me. Answer me. Moses did not lose the presence of God. Moses did not lose the presence of God at all. Because he made a mistake and got punished for that mistake. But the presence of God did not depart from him. Go and read your Bible very well. In fact, it is God himself that buried him. You know, he died in the presence of God up to now. Nobody knows where he's buried. So he still retained that presence of God with him. He's the one that appointed his successor. He prayed for him. You know, he did not lose it. He, he sinned against God. But that was only that God pushed him away. No, God didn't push him away. God punished him for what he has done. But at the same time, children of God, Christian can die of COVID-19. Please, don't tempt the Lord your God. That there are some responsibility that God wants us. See, I was reading, God asked me last year, during the last year, because I, 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 was, I was passing through challenges. God said, Go and read uh, the God generals. Holy Spirit told me. I've, I told the God Spirit, I've, I've, looked, I've read this book two times. He go and back. So I read it, I have five of them. One thing I've discovered is that most of these God generals that in the Bible, they die very young. At the age of 55, at the age of 51, 57, only few of them get old. Do you know why? They neglected their head. That was something that they don't carry anointing. But they fail in looking after themselves. They don't eat properly and they don't rest properly. And they die young. That was something they don't have the presence of God. So even though you are a child of God, you don't tempt God. The Bible says, if we mistakenly eat something, anything that's poison, it will not harm us. Not if you go there, they go and eat poison. You will die. That person will die. But God says, mistakenly, if you eat something that is poisonous, it will not harm us. That means we do it in ignorance. But if you go and tempt God, you go and eat, uh, the, this is the drink in Nigeria, if you drink it, you will die. May the Lord help us. So, Christian. But if a Christian, a lot of people, lot, I know a lot of people that there are people that have been attacked by COVID nineteen as a Christian, they don't die. God saved them, but don't they believe to go and expose yourself, stop doing what the maintain that idea again. So, God bless you. That's my. Praise the Lord. Can, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear. Is it now. Okay, I think it was my earpiece. Sorry, sir. Okay. okay. Um, there is a comment from Sister Jennifer. Okay. Yeah, and say so when you have the presence of God, God can reveal danger to the person. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He does. So that's what, yeah, Sister Jennifer's comments. Thank you, Thank you man. Yeah. 
Yes, anybody making comment? Nobody's making all the general ideas. Yes, sir. I'll make a comment, sir. Um, just quickly to add the comment of um the second question, can a genuine Christian die of COVID-19? Um, I'll just quickly go through um one of the temptations of, of Jesus Christ. Um, is that the second the second one or the third one, depending on the uh, account you are you are reading it for from when the, um, the devil was asked Jesus Christ that he should jump from the mountain after all, um, the angels okay. should take charge of him. And and that's in the, that's the Bible as well, it's in the book of uh, Psalm 91. Yeah. So yeah. exactly. Sometimes, uh, you know, one thing about Christian is presumption of sin. You know, I think that, that's one of the things the devil used to catch Christians. We just presume, we, we assume a, a, a lot of things and there are, there are guidelines, you know, there are safety measurements. Even this, the guidelines that they are God, um, um, they are giving us for COVID. It's God that gives men the wisdom to, to put those guidelines down. So why do you want to purposely want to ignore those guidelines or put yourself or put yourself in a in a compromising situation that would affect your health? Like you know, like Pastor has said. Yes, a genuine Christian can die of COVID nineteen. I've seen genuine Christians that died died, died of cancer. That doesn't mean that they don't have the power of God. You know, in fact, it was not somebody that died that even the bones. Was still doing um, miracles. Doesn't mean that, that the person is not genuine. The person is dead, but the person born was still doing miracles. And the person died. died you, know. you know, you know what God said concerning that uh, that uh, that prophet you just mentioned. Yes, sir. He said Elijah was sick, and the sick that will lead to his death. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he was sick. He, he, that's what I wanted to say. He, he was sick, and, and he died, but his bones, he, 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 the rest, so on. So. Yeah. Is God is omnipotent and he, he decides destiny when, when on his time for different people. But yes, don't tend to. And yes, I've seen death being a, being being a, a averted because the person is, is a Christian. So if God chooses chooses, you know. But we Christians, we should do our part and not, you know, have presumption presumption sins and uh, and, and, and presume too much. Mm. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's a powerful word. Yeah. Uh, another contribution, please. Praise the Lord. Mr. Evans. Yeah. yeah, okay. Just to add to what my brother said, one thing we have to understand as Christians is that death is not um, a characteristic of sin. Mm. We all want to go to heaven. The Bible says it is appointment to man to die at once. It doesn't mean that you have sinned. Yeah. Those who have been dying does not mean that they sinned before they died. Yes, sir. And COVID-19, I think we all watched the news. There was one pastor in the U.S. Mm. who they told to He's a young, uh, an old man. Stay home. He said, no. God is able. He went and COVID-19 carried him. Within two weeks, he was gone. Mm. So as pastor said, we should not expose ourselves, believing that, yes, we are born again and we are powerful and all that. And when we are seeing danger, we are bringing our head forward. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that we die does not mean that God has left us. That's what I, I wanted to establish because we all want to go to heaven. And we have, we, one way or the other, we have to die. Mm. There was a man of God, Mars Moro, who was involved in a plane crash. Does that mean that God left him? No. We can't tell. So I think that death is part of us. How we will go, nobody knows. Mm. Whether it's COVID, it can even be one mosquito, one stubborn mosquito from your garden, mm. and you can never tell. So death is not evidence that God has left us. No. It's one of the ways we go to heaven, but that doesn't mean that we have to expose ourselves to danger. So that's mm. what I wanted to add. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I just want to make my own contribution. One thing we should also understand as thank you um, for the for this teaching on the presence of God. One thing we should also understand about God is that God is a God of principles. Mm. Now there are certain laws that regulate the universe. As a God of principles, we are meant to adhere to those laws and principles that mm. regulate and govern the universe. His mm. presence is not a license to violate and compromise those principles and well, laws that regulate. Yeah. Exactly. Like so, uh, join to the lion then, says in Daniel. <laughs> yeah, pray, <laughs> praise the Lord. And miracles are good, but God has designed us to live by his principles. Yes, it, miracles are good, but does not mean we should ignore his principles. When it comes to our health, like you said, there are principles regarding our body. There are principles regarding our health. They must eat right. We must do the right exercise. And we must not violate certain things. We, we must bear that in mind because I think people mix these things up. So in as much as God's presence with us is not licensed to violate his presence. I always I tell people that your car, you will take it for the MOT at the right point in time. 
you will put petrol and diesel at the right point in time. It's the same thing with the body. God, your body needs to be taken care of. So the fact that um, you, are, you carry the presence of God does not mean you go and tempt God and expose yourself to certain sicknesses, viruses inten- intentionally. It is not Christian-like or Christ-like. If by, by, by commotion or omission, you find yourself in a situation where you couldn't avoid it, that is where we can call upon the power of God to come and take charge. So I just want our fellow Christians to understand and the principle that God is a God of principles as well. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I mean, how many of us will not buy phone in our car and said, okay, because I carry God, carry God present, you know, you will be stranded. You see, that is why I keep on telling people, it doesn't, even though you are the awesome person of God, as Mr. Shia have just said, the, the God has said this word to establish by principle. You know, and those principles are to be with, and I told you one of those, all those go get like, where go get it? Most of them, see, one of them has an, has an accident with his wife. His son go to him and said, he said, and, and he was there in pool of blood. And the son asked him, yeah, he asked his son, say, how about your mother? He said, mother is dead. He said, carry my hand and put up on her. The, the son lifted the man's hand and put up on the wife. The wife came back to that. The man died. So, so those guys don't, they perform miracles. That, miracles. Go and read God general. You can see what, they, what God used them to do. But most of them, because they fail to take out their own body, the body, see, this body is the temple, is the one that carries the anointing. If this body is gone, the anointing is gone. You know, a lot of people will arrive at the gate of heaven and God said, What are you doing here? By my time, by my watch, supposed to be, you still have 25 years more to do. But now, anyway, since you have come early, you are welcome. You know, so because of carelessness, because of our own negligence, you know, it's not because we have lost it. Like the question of Moses, Moses did not lose the person of God. He sinned. In fact, God took me out of you. I did your one or 20. How old was uh, 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 what of uh, Joshua died in your one and 10? How old Joseph that would, that's nothing was written concerning him? He died in your one and 10 as well. So even Moses got to 120. You know, even, even up to now, nobody knows why he's buried. <laughs> you know, so God is there. So that means. You see, command the presence of God. And you can see that in the book when when in the book of uh, uh, Jude, when Satan was angry with his body, you know, and, and they just said, the Lord rebuke you. So that means he did not lose it. You know, so because somebody died, because somebody died uh before his time does not mean that that person has lost the presence of God. So let's know that. God bless you. Yes, if you have done with uh, our contribution, Mr. Evans, take the offering from us and let's round up the service. Praise God. Um, let's uh, give our offering. Uh, the account number has been put on in our screen. Let's give about a minute for us to transfer if we are doing so. Right, let's bow down here and pray. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you for today's teaching. We thank you for revealing your word unto us in the name of Jesus. We ask that, O oh Lord, even as we journey on in the race of life, we ask that you give us the grace, O oh Lord, to always abide with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask that, O oh Lord, you cause us to be conscious of your second coming in the name of Jesus. Is there anything in our life that is contrary to your will? We ask that you take them away and give us the strength to overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that, O oh Lord, sin will not exert upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even in this last day, O oh Lord, cause us to be attentive, cause us to be alert to your promptings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As, O oh Lord, we continue in the week, we ask that you go ahead of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Next time we gather, Father, let no one of us, let none of us be missing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And give us a testimony as we gather on Sunday. Thank you because we know you have done it. Father, we all Lord, present the offering before you, O oh Lord. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. Your servant, O oh Lord, that you use for us, we ask for more insight, more anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. These words shall not stand against him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He will not miss heaven in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Your grace shall be sufficient for him in the mighty name of Jesus. We Amen. thank you for what you have done in our life today. Be thou exalted for Amen. in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And may the grace of Lord Jesus Christ.
the love of God oh, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's share our monthly confession. This is my season of outstanding results. I dedicate this season to God and declare that it is well with me. I take authority over this season and declare this is my season of outstanding results and I rejoice and be glad in it. As a father carries his child, please Lord carry me through this season and far away from the reach of the evil one. Carry me to greater and higher heights. Let every testimony I am pregnant with be delivered this season let me bring forth outstanding results. Father, work in me and mold my life to be a living testimony of outstanding results. Let my life overflow with love, joy, peace, and goodness. Mighty man in battle, fight for me on every side. Give me rest from all my fears, burdens, and troubles, and put an end to laboring without profit and results. Let my soul find rest in your presence. Give me peace of mind, Father, in this, in this season. Let me see the manifestation and fulfillment of your promises in my life. Oh. God will make everything work for me. He will surprise me and give me the best of good, goodness and joy. Just like the ego, I'll fly high. Like gold, I'll be valued. Like the sun, I'll shine brighter. Like the river, I shall flow unlimited. Like the palm tree, I shall flourish. And like money, I shall be useful. I believe it. I confess it. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Don't forget our fasting start on Monday. You are blessed.